just the edges that are protected. And so then you're worried about scratching your panel. Well, this comes already. 4K, 144 hertz, HDR gaming TV. That's extreme. Let's go to the extreme opposite. So before my trip to Vancouver for LTX 2019, literally hours before our flight, I made my wife come with me to run to Walmart. Pick up this. This is a 50 inch 4K TV that was $99. And in this video, we're gonna find out if it was worth potentially missing my flight and the $99. After a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by privacy.com. Stay tuned until later in the video to find out how you can keep yourself protected while buying all the things, if you're anything like me, this holiday season. Gotta make sure you can see it, of course. This TV is from the brand On, O-N-N. -N. This is apparently Walmart's in-house new brand for their electronics that is separate from their overpowered gaming PCs. I try to avoid being at Walmart as much as possible these days, so I haven't actually seen or heard of this until Linus recently posted a video about one of their tablets. And I had been pointed to a deal on a 4K smart TV that was 50 inches for about 150 bucks that people were tracking on Amazon. So I were on at Walmart. It was this one. So I was keeping track of that for a couple weeks. And my plan was after we got back from Vancouver, I was gonna go pick it up. Seemed like a good deal. I have some uses for it, specific use cases, which we'll talk about in a minute, but thought it would be great. And then I refreshed the page, mostly on accident. The day we were going to fly to Vancouver that morning, we our flight wasn't until like four or 5 p.m. So uh, we had a few hours at the house still. I refresh the page and it's on clearance for $99 and there's only one left in the tri-state area and it's our local Walmart. I panicked for a bit and decided we should go pick it up and I'm glad I did. Uh, they, it said they had two left, but when I got there, this was the only one they could pull out and the dude clearly did not want to give it to me. Like I'm pretty sure someone had it, like an employee had it reserved in case nobody bought it. And I kind of was like, hey, you should go check. And then he came dragging this out pouting. And so I was able to get it. It's not HDR, as far as I can tell. It's not a smart TV, but it's $50 for my uses. We're going to see if it's still even in one piece since it's now been like a month since LTX. So here's the thing. I am well aware that any TV that costs $100 is not going to be amazing. This was probably leftover Black Friday or Cyber Monday sales from Walmart or something because they do have a new that was on the floor, $250 4K HDR TV. To replace this so this is probably you know last year's clearance model that they were just getting rid of but a hundred dollars for a 4k tv is an incredible value like as long as it's decent there's very little ar to argue against this and we actually wanted to get a second for a family member who's still using crt tvs and basic like over the air antennas just to have a usable modern tv because there are a lot of people who are using old cheap bad tvs that for a hundred bucks even if this doesn't have pristine image quality or hyper fast, low latency game mode, it'd still be pretty good. It would be way better than what a lot of the population is using. All right. So we have one of the legs. It does have a two-sided leg system instead of a center stand. So we have separate legs. I've not opened a 50-inch TV in a very long time. I'm pretty sure the two we have is like 40-inch and 45-inch, respectively. One being my 1080p TV I've had since I was 16. So this is really awkward to do as one person on this table. <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to carefully do this on the edge of my table. So I'm tearing a hole in the bag so it keeps protecting the surface so I can get this installed. This is really awkward. So for your $100, you're getting two basic plastic feet that go on each side, sticking outwards, and a power cable that is not detachable. I don't know how the heck that was a worthwhile cost to cut, but the power cable isn't detachable. This does have Visa mounting, by the way, so if the stand doesn't give you confidence, you can use your own. I'm hoping to just only ever use this, but... It's also not a very convenient stand to set up in my small working space either. 
All right, I'm gonna try to get this stand stood up here, but something I wanted to note is it looks like it has these massive speaker grill cutouts that look super impressive, but the speakers themselves are only like half of that, like the width of two of my fingers. They look super thin. They're probably gonna sound like absolute ass. So this is certainly not the flattest TV in the world. A lot of the TVs are moving to being super thin and flat, and this is definitely more traditional looking like what you would see in the 1080p TVs, but you do have a full Visa mount here, and it even tells you which size screws you need for it, which is kind of cool. The power cable is not detachable, as I mentioned. Really obnoxious, but it is only a two-prong, so theoretically, if you wanted to get fancy, you could solder your own cable extension or something if you want. It has four HDMI inputs, HDMI 1 having the audio return channel, which I mentioned my first TV lacked. It has optical audio out to run to your sound bar or speaker system or receiver. It has a USB host, but it's unclear at the moment. I can read the manual, of course, whether that's actually, well, it's not going to play any files because it's not a smart TV. So I guess that's for firmware tinkering, debugging, like on older TVs. It's got an antenna cable in, and then it has component audio and video in. It also says AV in, so I'm thinking, yeah, the... That feeling when things fall on set. So not only does it have the four HDMI in, the antenna in, and the optical out, which are a, is a very feature complete kind of thing. It has a 3.5 millimeter line out to run to other sorts of speakers or a headphone amp or something like that. It also has full analog jacks as well. So you have the YPBPR and the Y will act as the composite input as well. And red and white RCA jacks for analog video input. I don't see this anymore on any TVs. We are phasing out a lot of this stuff and my current 4K HDR Smart TV only has these weird 3.5 millimeter adapters and it doesn't even play right with analog signals. And this has full physical analog audio or audio and video jacks on it for a variety of systems. So I wanna test it and find out if it supports 240p over component, 240p at all. How well does it deinterlace 480i? Like this may replace my TV in my retro room because it has some updated analog signals. It could, it's probably gonna be terrible, but I am super stoked to test this out. It is not super heavy, it's just really awkward. Yeah, it barely fits on this table. This is gonna be a problem to use for what I wanna use it for. Also on the back of the TV, it has a little roundabout of controls, which you're never going to be able to see while you're seeing the screen. So while it's cool that they have physical controls, cause those are getting phased out as well, it's not super useful. But here we have the nice screen. It is a little reflective, but not incredibly so. The goal for this TV is I want to use it for backdrops and underneath surfaces for B-roll. I want to be able to throw stuff up on it and have it blurred out in the background. I've actually done that since buying this TV with the little monitor I had back there um, in place of it for small products, but I want to be able to do it for bigger products. So I wanted a big TV that I could, excuse me, use as a TV, or, you know, as a table or a backdrop where I have full control over whatever's coming out to it via a Chromecast or just an HDMI lead from a laptop or something like that. But we're gonna see how the image is after I go pick up my wife from, or I, I, I gotta go pick her up right now. I can't keep recording. So we're gonna hear more from our sponsor, privacy.com. As mentioned, this video is brought to you by privacy.com. Privacy.com lets you buy things online using virtual cards instead of real ones, protecting your identity and bank information on the internet. If you're anything like me, this holiday season you are buying so, so many things. <laughs> and when we do so, we give access to our personal information to merchants and their data partners, and that happens without our clear consent. Security protection isn't always the sexiest or most fun topic, but it's important to ensure, especially when you're buying so many gifts, that your data is safe and secure. Currently, on their free personal plan, you can create up to 12 cards a month, and now Privacy has just launched two paid versions, Pro and Teams. Pro for 10 bucks a month gives you everything access to everything in the free personal plan, plus 1% cash back on all purchases, 36 cards per month, and more security and privacy features. Teams, for those who own a small business or are in charge of a team or people, for 25 bucks a month will give you access to everything included in the free and pro versions, but dedicated account management, uh, access to 60 cards per month, and transaction limits tailored to your business needs. Head to privacy.com slash and sign up for an account. As a special treat for my viewers, new customers will automatically get five free dollars to spend on your first purchase for a limited time yeah that's fr free money that's basically just an entire holiday gift you can get for somebody right now just for signing up head to privacy.com slash evils box and sign up now all right so it's been like a week or so but let's get this bad boy hooked up see what it looks like and i even brought in 
my Super Nintendo so we can test its component input and see what we're working with. And I'm pretty excited. Part two of this video is gonna be even weirder, so get subscribed. I did find out in the meantime that they are still selling, or at least as of a few days ago, a 43 inch version of this that is a smart TV. And it's not even, you know, the dumb TV like this. It is a smart TV, still 4K, 43 inch for 99 bucks at some of the Walmarts. So it's actually a really good deal. All right, it is plugged in. It is not on. Power. It works. The menu is actually fairly decent looking. There's actually a real big glitch right there. Never mind. The text is glitched. Don't know if you can see that, but the W in wizard is like really messed up. Super weird. All right, first and foremost, I want to check out the menu system. So we have picture modes, eco, standard, dynamic, movie, custom. Again, this is, oh, there's no game mode. No game mode. I'm gonna put it on standard. Again, this is not a HDR TV. Uh, dynamic contrast, noise reduction, low, aspect Y. Actually, noise reduction off, aspect ratio normal, dynamic contrast off. Audio settings. We got basic sound settings. Surround sound, perfect volume, not gonna mess with that. Sleep timers, that's good to see. I get a lot of complaints about certain TVs not having timers. This is mostly normal stuff. Demo mode, HDMI 4K mode. I may have to actually have an input for this to really have a lot. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of options. The lack of game mode is really disappointing, but we are gonna hook up my Super Nintendo here to the component input and see what that gets us. If you're confused as to how this is possible and what the heck I'm doing, I'm using what's a component cable from the company HD Retrovision. They're available on Amazon. I have affiliate links in the description below. They make a bunch of high quality component cables for a lot of retro systems, which keeps them at 240p. It's not a scale or anything, but it takes the native RGB output of systems like the PS1, the Super Nintendo, and transcodes that to YPBPR for component input, which works really well so I can avoid SCART cables and a whole lot of that stuff that the, that the retro scene deals with. So that is what we're working with for 240p component. All right, Super Nintendo is on. Input, AV. Oh dear God. <laughs> um, it's black and white. It is completely pixelated, which may mean that it's doing integer scaling. Let's get the volume down here. Info. All it says is NTSC. Um, why is it black and white if it's YPBPR? What in the world? Picture. It doesn't give me resolution information. It doesn't give me control to change whether or not it's like reading it as composite or component. It is pixelated enough. It might be using integer scaling, to be honest. But it's black and white, so... I'm gonna say don't buy this for retro games and it's not gonna be replacing my retro room TV anytime soon. All right, let's get some 4K media going and then I'm gonna test the latency real quick. Whew. <laughs> All right, we're looking at an average of 34 milliseconds of input latency at the top of the frame, which is really not good. And again, keep in mind, this TV does not have game mode, so you can't reduce that. At the bottom of the frame, looking at about 48 to 49 milliseconds. Not great. All right, it's 4K time. I've got my gaming laptop hooked up here, connected to the HDMI 1 port. I really hope that didn't default to... Ho, ho, ho. All right. So it's only doing 3840 by 2160 at 30 hertz, despite the fact that I know this is a... HDMI 2.0, 18 gigabit per second cable. So that's already concerning on top of the fact 
But this just looks bad. Oh, it feels horrible at 30 hertz. It may be doing that because of my screen, so let me see if I can set up an extended screen here. Hey, I was able to actually set 30, 40 by 20, 160 at 60 hertz. I am impressed, but this is operating at a super terrible color profile or something. Like, I'm gonna have to get close-ups of this because the way that the outlines of the text and the windows looks is horrendous. There's like some sort of weird ghosting going on. I'm gonna pull up a 4K YouTube video so we can see how that looks and then... All right, <laughs> the point of this was not to get an amazing TV. I'm seeing how it is for 99 bucks. For 99 bucks, for the people who it's intended to be used for. The upgrade from really old bad TVs, this is fine and most of them won't notice. And that, it's functional and it has certain modes and that is what matters for TV watching, not how great it is for gaming and things like that. I just wanted to see in case it was, you know, a hidden gem. It, it's not. If you want the cheapest of anything, you're probably hooking it up to an entry-level system, in which case you're going to struggle to run the latest games at 4K at decent frame rates anyway. So, there's no mute video button. Is about what you guys really want. The cheapest... It is funny that he's making a video about the cheapest 4K monitor, 144 hertz monitors. When we're talking about this, the speakers are terrible. The speakers are not good. They're better than some TVs I've used, but the sound, like, they're not, like, booming, but the sound quality is not great. This is not a sharp or great-looking image by any stretch. It's actually really quite blurry. And the colors are just really odd. They're really off. Let me change it to movie mode. Movie. Actually, movie looks a little bit better. I'm not gonna lie. Movie looks a little bit better. But even the text from their logo, which is super sharp, just has these weird pixeled edges. Now, someone did say that, I believe it was TCL, was found caught, like, lying about their 4K TVs, and they were just upscaling. This doesn't look like, you know, 4K downsampled to 1080p and stretched back out to me. I think this is still 4K. It's just the cheapest panel that Walmart could source to put in here. And it's not great. Honestly, once you start stepping a little further away with the right content, it's not terrible. But there's just something off about the contrast and colors, which you can tweak a little bit in the menus. But there's like a lot of red kind of present there. And you can see some sort of sharp details get resolved. Like that one's not too bad. But eh. So the question is, should you buy a $99 4K TV? If you're one of my viewers, the answer is probably no, because you're probably an enthusiast and you have specific, you know, levels of expectations. If you're looking to buy it for a relative that has a really bad old TV that you maybe want them to check out, wouldn't be the worst option. I've had, you know, we have relatives now that have upgraded from CRTs to this, and it will always be a better experience, you know, for their non-retro related uses and watching TV. So, yeah. But I'm saving this for a really cool project that we're gonna tackle in part two, which is why I wanna go ahead and get this filmed. So stay tuned for that. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. I do not have any product links for this because this one is discontinued. Let me know, what do you think? Would you use a $99 TV? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm Evil Fox. I'll see you next time.